young Africans who sometimes may irritate us. But is it not our duty to be irritated by younger generation? In fact, I dare say that the young generation must only have one mantra and only one claim to fame, that they must irritate those who are in power so effectively and in such an organized manner that they'll have no choice but to do that which is good and right. Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to another episode of Nice Corner. I hope you guys are wonderful and you guys are blessed. Today I have a very special dynamic guest here with me who is a social youth activist whose goal and mission is to eradicate poverty in Africa's communities and raise youth leaders. He is the president and CEO of One Billion Africa, an organization who encourages and motivates Africa's youth to find problems in their communities and to turn them into projects. He has so many accolades to his name. I don't want to forget anything and leave anything out. He is the re recipient in 2015 JCI's top outstanding young person in Ghana and top 20 young person in the world. He also received the Unsung Heroes People Distinction Humanitarian Award. He is on the list of top 30 under 30 future Ghana Young Talents. Also, he's on the list of Golden Trek Goals, top 10 fast leaders list on 2014. He has graced the stage of TEDx twice, and he is 2016 Brightest Young Minds alumni and Ashoka Changemaker Scholar, as well as the associate at the Royal Commonwealth Society. So please help me welcome Prince Adu Apia. Thank, thank you so you, much, you, Prince. I have you. to give you a hug. <laughs> oh my gosh, you are such an awesome person. And we're sitting thank here you. at your alma mater, yes, University yes, of Ghana. How yes, does it feel yes. to be here again? Well, first off, I want <laughs> to start by saying thanks for having me. Oh. I appreciate this um, opportunity. Yes, um, it's refreshing to be back, you know, University of Ghana campus. Mm -hmm. uh, this university means a lot to me Aww. because this is where a lot of things happen for me. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's really a great place. It's really, really a great place. Each time I come back, I don't want to. You I don't want to uh, leave. I, I, it's, and it's, you gave us yeah. like the grand tour <laughs> of it. It almost makes you feel like you're at home, huh? Yep, yep, definitely. Oh, definitely. oh that's you, amazing. You know, you know when, when during vacations, while I was in school, during vacations, Mm -hmm. I'll just come back, you know, go to the bomb library, walk uh -huh. along the streets, you uh -huh. know, just to, you know, do some daydreaming. Oh, so you're like just daydream here, you just feel so at home, you're like, oh, I'm going to just daydream my life away. Yes, <laughs> but yes, it's so yes. awesome. So please, can you please share with us when One Billion Africa was started, the inception, and why was it started? So uh, it, it goes back to 2013, December 2013, when One okay. Billion Africa started. But um, uh, it, it, it was a build-up of passion that mm -hmm. was boiling up in me that led to the build-up of One Billion Africa. Prior to this, I was, you know, engaged in a lot of volunteering activities uh -huh. and, and so on and so forth. And uh, I had the um, aha moment when mm -hmm. I, I thought, of one billion problems on the continent being solved by one billion people in mm -hmm. Africa. You know, when you do the math, you just right. cancel it you out. Just cancel and we like get <laughs> opportunities and mm -hmm. solutions all across the continent. So right. December 2013 is when one billion Africa started. Oh, and it was kind of like that passion yeah. and that yeah. desire yeah. came from it. Yeah. So please, can you also share with us, what does one billion Africa stand for? What is the core values of one billion Africa? Okay, so in um, the year 2013, I, mm -hmm. I started doing something as a young person. I, mm -hmm. I started making friends from outside of Ghana. Okay. So I started reading about what other young people are doing in mm -hmm. India, you know, in, in Africa, Uganda, Cameroon, uh, and all these um, various, various countries. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it, it really inspired me because, I, like I said, I had a build-up that we can do something as young people here, right. here on the continent. Mm -hmm. So when One Billion Africa started, basically the, the short form is 1BA, which stands for One Billion Africa. Uh -huh. And it's, a, it's grown to become a movement or a civil society organization that mm -hmm. empowers Africa's youth to find problems within their communities and to turn them into projects. So uh, wow. our core values really is to, is to, you know, that determination, that passion of young people doing mm -hmm. stuff, rolling up sleeves, 
and, mm -hmm. and, and, and creating solutions um, um, within their communities. And we engaged in several activities. I don't know if you want me to go into oh, them. Oh, please, please share the community <laughs> outreach, the different projects okay. that One Billion Africans are doing. Okay, okay. So we engage in quite a number of activities, about six of them. Mm -hmm. But one one of them is the what we call One Billion Project. So this is when my team and I, we come together um, along the year, we identify certain communities, study them, do some surveys, identify a problem, and then turn it into a project. A typical example is, you know, we start from the problem, mm -hmm. we create a project. So okay. um, the problem we identified in the Dodua region, uh, I mean community, there is an orphanage there. Mm -hmm. is the fact that, you know, on this side of the world, well, I don't know else for elsewhere, uh -huh. when orphans turn 18 years old, they are supposed to leave the orphanage homes. Okay. So okay. we realized that usually they live with no skills, and so some right, of them... no trade. Yes. Mm -hmm. Some of them actually settle on the streets. Some engage in deviant activities and so on and so forth. So oh, that's wow, the problem. Really? And we created, yes, we created tech to orphans, and that is more like technology to orphanage homes. Oh, that is you know, amazing. To, to, to help them gain employable skills uh -huh. or entrepreneurial skills uh -huh. so that when they leave the orphanage homes, they uh -huh. can do something. You know, so we give them coding um, skills, web designing, graphic designing, oh, and, wow. and you stuff do this like with that. orphans? Yes. Oh, with, with, wow. With, with that too. is, you know, that's so awesome because, you know, as an orphan, you kind of, to have those resources there, you need that. So exactly. how do the orphans take to that? Do they, you know, really, they like amped about it and they really take it out for like a train? Okay, well, we believe in, um, we, we don't believe, let me tell you what we don't believe in. Mm -hmm. We don't believe in giving people fish. Mm -hmm. We believe in teaching people how to fish or showing people how to own a pool, a fish, right, a fish pond. Why a fish pond? <laughs> <laughs> so basically that's what the project is about. And uh -huh. you know, there are, are talents everywhere. Mm -hmm. It's amazing the pool of talent in these orphanage homes. You see the kids. Oh. It's amazing what they can do, and some of them really, really surprised us. So, so that's one BA project. We have several other projects that we run. I mean, there are so many of them on our website. Mm -hmm. we, we also engaged in um, what we call One B Academy. So we have an okay. academy of entrepreneurs or change makers mm -hmm. who are doing stuff within their communities mm -hmm. and, and leveraging on their potentials. We bring them together, see if we can help them one way or the other to make them you know, thrive mm -hmm. or, or do well, whatever they are doing within their communities. Wow, um, there are several awesome. other activities that we are engaged in. That's really in. awesome. And I was, you know, reading up on One Billion Africa. I think it's amazing bringing tech because the STEM fields, I know in the States, I can only speak for the States, kind of black kids are not really encouraged to go toward that STEM mm -hmm. vein. So is it kind of the same thing here? with STEM? Well, it's interesting that you mentioned STEM because mm -hmm. we have a project that is starting very soon called STEM for Africa Project. Okay. You know, but to answer your question directly, in maybe in the cities, um, you know, with the flashy schools here in Accra and elsewhere in Ghana, that, I mean, STEM can be fun, but mm -hmm. when you go to where we incline to, that is the rural communities, mm -hmm. STEM is not interesting. Why? Because it is theoretical. Mo okay. The children do most of the things on the blackboard. You know, okay, how gotcha. can you learn Microsoft Office on the blackboard? Right, right, and that makes sense. That yeah, makes I, a lot I, of I, sense. I, exactly, and so STEM is not really, I, I would say it's not really encouraging or mm. experiential enough in the rural communities, which is why we, we've come up with the STEM for Africa project mm -hmm. that is going to pilot in the Shidium community in Bronga Hafo region. Mm -hmm. We're taking the science set toolkit, more like a portable laboratory you can put in your school bag. Oh, that's We're taking really like cute. A, a, a thousand pieces to uh -huh. the community to take the children through, you know, experiential STEM education for two years. For two years, for two wow. Years. You know, yes. because I, we have the minds as black people for STEM. It's yeah. just, if we're pushed in that vein, there's no telling what we can do because we have that the minds true. for it. So I that think it's true. absolutely awesome what that you're doing, true. what One Billion Africa is doing Thank you. to go to the, uh, the rural communities and the orphans and kind of just really be that, almost that upliftment. 
Yeah. And that's why I really, you know, believe in what you're doing. And um, just to let you guys know, I have known Prince practically ever since we've moved here. He is one of the most humble people that I know, especially for all of his accomplishments that he has accomplished. You really are. You would, you would never know that he really has accomplished so much in his young life because he's so humble about it. And really, what you want to do is help. And with your, with your story, of course, obviously, I know what your story is. But could you please share really that and really your story is growing up and just really how your passion grew? Where do I start? <laughs> well, the beginning <laughs> is nice. <laughs> okay. Well, from the beginning, I, I used to be an introvert, you know, when I was a child. Oh. And um, I love to be in my corner just to think and to dream. When, mm -hmm. when I was very, like a kid, very young, uh -huh. um, I used to have what I call my imagination trip. And usually after watching superhero cartoons and movies like the Captain Planet, the uh -huh. Batman, the Superman, I would rush to my corner mm -hmm. and um, embark on my imagination trip. So that is me flying over my community, you know, mm -hmm. trying to solve problems, catching back fo bad folks, you know, mm -hmm. trying to make people smile. Right, and that is right. what, and, and in my typical imagination trip as a kid, you would find me there smiling. Sitting down alone just and sitting smiling. Sitting down alone, just smiling. Like, okay. But but, but the, the sad thing about it, it mm -hmm. is after my imagination trip, I'll be sad again. Oh. Oft, often, because at the time I was living with some family members mm -hmm. who would, you know, call me funny names at school. My friends would also call me funny names. So I really, really cherish my imagination trips. Oh, uh, but, wow. but 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 okay. fast forward ten years after that, that was I was in my teens, around mm -hmm. seventeen years old. Um, and I began discovering myself as a young person. Uh -huh. I started asking myself, what am I supposed to do? You know, I was, I love to read the, the book of Kings, first Kings, second Kings, first Samuel, yes. second. When I was around that age, you know, wow. I, I was reading about David and all the exploits, uh -huh. you know, about all those people. Uh -huh. And I started asking myself, what, what is my place in this world? And uh, one thing my imagination trips did for me is that mm -hmm. they created in me the desire to see change. Wow. The passion to create change. Uh -huh. And so, um, fast forward, I mm -hmm. found myself here in the University of Ghana. And mm -hmm. whilst I was here, you know, it wasn't all smooth, it wasn't all rosy. Mm -hmm. As there was a, a number of challenges which also kept me thinking as a young person, you know, because here I'm, I'm, I'm the kind of person who wants to create change, uh -huh. you know, possibly starting from my own challenges. A typical example, mm -hmm. I studied computer science here in the school. Oh, so you're a techie? Yep, I'm Oh, techie. you're a techie, I okay. I love tech. <laughs> and I was here for four years, uh -huh. but guess what? I didn't have my own computer. Oh, okay. I, would, I would borrow friends' computers to study at night, mm -hmm. you know. My very first website, I, I recall, I used four different computers. Wow, four? Yes. Count them four, people. Be, four. Be, be, because I go to the available computer for my friend. Mm -hmm. I'm in the process of programming. He counts for his computer. I put oh, everything wow. on a flash drive, move to the next available computer. I oh, ended up gosh. using four different computers. And when I was done, I told the website, You've been through a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? That really shows that no matter what, your mind is really set towards something, you never give up. And yes, that you yes. stay tenacious. Giving up is not an option. Exactly. I mean, uh, it, shouldn't, it shouldn't be an option. And so, um, like I was saying, there were so many challenges. But what mm -hmm. I was also doing as a... And you know the, the techie challenges I'm talking mm -hmm. about? It, it made me become an entrepreneur on campus. Um, I, would, wow. I, would, I didn't have a computer, but I was fixing computers for others, you know, to earn something uh, small. See, you um, software, it out. hardware, when there's a web will, there's designer. A way. I, I believe that so much. <laughs> but I was doing some something else was in school. Wow. I, I engaged in volunteering activities, volunteerism activities with my church, uh -huh. with other groups. So would often uh, often visit rural communities, mm -hmm. you know on evangelism projects and other projects. And each time we're in these communities, you know, I'll come back sleeping at night and sometimes have tears in, in my eyes. Oh. Let me tell you of one interesting story. One yes. time I met this in a school in a village. Uh -huh. I met this uh, 
young girl, uh, seven years, eight years old. Mm -hmm. And I asked her, what do you want to become in future when you mm -hmm. grow up? And she was like, she responded me immediately as though she had thought of it already. Mm -hmm. She was like, I want to be a nurse. And I'm uh. like, wow, that's beautiful. Why do you mm -hmm. want to be a nurse? And she said, so that one day when my mom is sick, I can take care of her. Aww. Or when, when my community people are sick, I can take care of them. That touched me so much. Wow. And these are the kind of stories that I'll be reliving when I come back home. So, you my know, it's, it's, my inclination is towards the rural communities. Mm -hmm. And like I said, um, whilst I was in school, at night, I will just be pacing along the street thinking, mm -hmm. Why all these challenges? Why are single parents struggling with mm -hmm. paying their children's school fees? Why are people dying out of, you know, preventable right. illnesses exactly. and, and stuff like that? And that is what got me thinking. So it was one dawn at around 2.30 a.m. I remember so vividly. I had tears in the eye and I was mm. thinking, God, why do we have so, why is Africa poor? We have mm -hmm. every resource in the world, but... That's true. Why are we not moving forward? Why are we not a superpower? Mm -hmm. And um, in that deep passion state, I heard a voice mm -hmm. um, that asked me the question, how many problems are there in Africa? Mm -hmm. And in my frustration, I shouted, plenty! <laughs> it was a plenty! A billion problems! Yeah. And then the voice continued, how about you help create a platform that help turn these one billion problems into one billion projects. And uh, that was see, my that, aha see, moment. That was, that was the voice of the Most High. I believe, and, I believe that. And, you know, with you saying that you have that compassion, that's where the real superheroes come in. Of course, we're used to seeing <laughs> Superman, Batman, Black Panther, woo -woo. But what you're doing is that really shows really what a true superhero is all about and your, I'm and your just passion. doing what I love. And that really, you can tell that that comes from your heart and you touching that young, that young girl or, or the people or young kids such as that young girl, that's where that really comes in, of you being a superhero and you being put on this earth to do what I the Most High is telling Amen. you and commissioned Amen. you to do. Because we're all here for a purpose. Yes, We're all definitely. here for a purpose definitely. and we're not here by accident. Definitely. And that's what the Most High has placed upon you. And I, I just think that you're just a dynamic and lovely person. And I'm just so blessed <laughs> that I, you know, that we have come, you know, in, you know, in contact with you. My so pleasure. with with, with One Billion Africa, how do you see diasporans fitting in the vision of One Billion Africa? That question reminds me of a TED, a TED talk that I watched mm -hmm. some years back, and this was done in 2007. Uh -huh. um, it was a TED talk by a Kenyan activist called Ori Okolo. Okay. Wherever she is, God bless her. Mm -hmm. and as part of her talk, she said something. She said, Africans in the diaspora, this is the time to jump back to the continent. <laughs> jump? <laughs> Literally, like, <laughs> you don't have to. Jump, swim, Jump, fly, whatever, whatever you have to do. <laughs> just uh, disappear and appear <laughs> on a continent mm -hmm. and find yourself something doing. You know, we uh -huh. are God's last card. We believe that. Uh, Africa, my, my, my um, um, pastor at church says, Africa is God's last card. Mm -hmm. And I believe that, you know, Africans in the diaspora, this mm -hmm. is the time for the diasporans to come back to the, jump back to the continent, yes. to find a problem, to associate with the One Billion Africa vision, find a problem, turn it into a project. Mm -hmm. There are so many things happening across the continent. In, yes, I mean, the, the media um, elsewhere would mm -hmm. portray Africa in a certain light. Exactly, but that's the for a reason. The single-sided story. That's for a reason. Because um, we don't own our own superpower media. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if we do, but mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's the yeah, point. No, we don't. That's the <laughs> point. Don't. There, there are so many amazing things happening on our uh, continent. In one of my TEDx talks, I mentioned that Africans are not lazy people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We just need an inspiring environment. And wow. guess what? I believe that diasporans can mm -hmm. come and create some of this inspiring environment for yes. the youth of the continent to thrive in. I, I, I'm in a network with so many youth entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. and I see some of them quitting along the line. Wow. I mean, 
in, in Africa, sometimes you have to even pray about the internet. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> The, you shouldn't God bother the God with the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes we have to pray about it. You know, but you have Skype calls with your partners. Yeah. I don't know if I can tell you this story. Some yeah. time ago, we set up a, Sky, a, a Skype call with a potential partner in the United States. Mm -hmm. Just a minute to the call, lights went out. Oh, are you kidding? Just oh. a minute to the call. And it was so frustrating, you know. I know it was. And, and some of the youth can't take these challenges, but you know, we need to keep pushing on. But I believe exactly. that diasporans have so many roles to play. Specifically, when it comes to one billion Africa, two things come to mind. Mm. We are bu currently building what we call 1BA Connect. This is a digital Heavenly platform. That hosts several projects across the continent mm. and connects these projects to opportunities, mm -hmm. where opportunities mean funding, partnerships, mm -hmm. volunteering or volunteers, okay. and then media publicity. So it's a digital oh, platform. Okay. So just imagine it a digital platform with so oh. many projects, reliable projects, trustworthy projects mm -hmm. um, that that with these projects being connected to these four opportunities I have mentioned, I believe mm. that diasporans can come and play a role on something like this. The last thing is um, we, we've set up what we call the 1BA fund. That okay. is a fund to, to that, that scouts for thriving, sustainable and scalable projects across the continent in Ghana in different mm -hmm. amazing, inspiring projects. So a fund that will f support these projects and make them happen. You wow. know, so we, we, we're looking for partners, partners, preferably from amongst the diasporans. Well, you, you know, know to, I will say this, to, with to, diasporans, I feel that we are all one, we are all connected as black people globally. And I feel that what you're doing, because One Billion Africa is so impressive, it's not only here on this continent, but even it surpasses yeah. the continent, the work that you're doing and the your impact, what your organization is doing, affecting people's lives. And I feel that we should be a help to one another, Definitely. especially when it comes Definitely. to young people Definitely. because I mean here on this continent what is it like 70 percent we are the youth yeah we're the youth it's like continent. 70 percent of continent. this continent is yeah. under the age of 30 I mean yeah. that happens by no accident yeah. people that's by no yeah. accident so, so, so look at this um, youthful continents right mm -hmm. so the maybe the the um, the population of Africans with with, with within the youth bracket mm -hmm. just add 20 years to everyone's years. Oh, wow. Now, some would be 40, some mm -hmm. would be 30, some would be 35, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. If we empower them now, exactly, start when they're the little. Guess the impact exactly. that they will create, the can you, ripple effect. Can you effect. imagine? I mean, I'm excited. I don't it's, know about you, but I'm excited and, for this. And, and this feeds into um, AU's Agenda 2063. Mm -hmm. I love, they have seven aspirations described in the whole, they, they call it the Africa we want to see in the year 2063. Uh -huh. That is 50 years from 2013. That seems so long. But, the way time but, flies. but development is not a short-term <laughs> game, so it's right. fine. Um, I love the sit aspiration, which mm -hmm. kind of fits into this. The sit aspiration says that, you know, we want to see an Africa that is being developed by Africans. Okay. We want to see an Africa that leverages the potentials of Africans, including mm -hmm. Africans in the diaspora. Exactly. So we exactly. are really because one we're all people. One. We're all yes. one, and we yes. should be there to yes. help build each other up exactly. and build up our nation. Exactly. And what you're doing, it's definitely one of those vehicles. It's only the so beginning. So I'm, I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited, Prince. I really am. So, Thank you. It's, so it's, it's only the so beginning. So if people, you know, how can people get in touch with you? You know, if they want to find out more about your organization, well, well, and you. <laughs> so we, we thank God for the internet. Mm -hmm. um, you can find us on www.1billionafrica.org or you can mm -hmm. simply Google 1billionafrica.org, number 1billionafrica.org. Mm -hmm. You can get access to our Instagram, um, Facebook, Twitter, mm -hmm. and other social media platforms. We have our phone numbers on there. In fact, I would encourage you to visit our website, spend some time over there. There are so many places, you know, to to find to stuff, find stuff and, and be inspired. With One Billion Africa. Well, you know, I just, again, I appreciate you so much for coming on my, my channel. Pleasure. My and, pleasure. Um, and for my viewers, please stand behind what he's doing. It's amazing. It's 
it, it's just, it's really amazing. So thank please you. check him out. I will put all of his links in my description box. And thank you guys so much for tuning in. And please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and share this information with others. And you guys stay blessed. Thank you so much. Bye. <laughs> Let me end this talk with a call. And I make a call today to our leaders in the African Union offices in Addis, Ethiopia, and the rest of East Africa. I make a call today to the new leaders that we have seen emerging from the leadership corridors of Cote d'Ivoire and some other parts of West Africa. I make a call today to our leaders in civic leadership and public management and, and in government in the SADC region, including that head teacher in Tembisa community in South Africa. I make a call today to our leaders in North Africa and to our mothers and fathers in Central Africa. I make a call today to them to help develop the support systems we need in Africa, to involve us in creating the, the enabling policies that Jessica's fashion business and Protro Diaries will thrive on. I, I, I make a call to our leaders to, to um, make us their priority, to trust us, to invest in us. And then I make my second call to you here, to you here, to the one who would watch this talk, to the Africans in the diaspora, that guys, this is not the time for juvenile stuff. Say, hey, you are better than this. Hey, I'm better than you. I want that award. You are, you are not doing anything. You know, that's not, this is not the time for all those things. This is the time to lay our brick together. Each brick is important to help build the walls of Africa. This is the time to move Africa forward in our actions than keep Africa stationary in our inactions. Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank <music> you.